Welcome for coming here this morning. Um, this is pretty new ground we're going to be touching. Um, it's a headless project with WordPress and using GraphQL and ReactJS. We had a little bit of talk with React this morning, and there will be other talks later on today with React. So it's pretty new ground for us to, uh, PHP developers. Um, in 2015, Matt Mullenweg um, from WordPress, the founder of WordPress, in December 2015, asked us developers to do some homework. Who has done their homework? Learn JavaScript deeply. <laughs> OK. Get yourself started now, because the wave has already started, and WordPress is moving on a lot, and it will be moving fast. Um, and so anybody got touch with React? REST API? OK. GraphQL? Yeah, OK, cool, cool. All right, all right. So it'll, it's going to be pretty new ground. So the goal of today is just to make yourself aware of what's GraphQL, what does it do, and how to implement it with WordPress and with React. You won't, get be, uh, you won't be a specialist, but it'll at least you'll know what it does and how, why we would be good to use it. Uh, my name is Etienne Belanger. I am a um, WordPress developer. I've been using WordPress for 10 years. I'm a self-taught developer. So when I don't work at the, during the day, uh, at night, I just study and work on that. Else, um, The web has changed a lot. Um, from a lot of years since I've been starting touching the web, about 15 years ago, it was you know just website. Just a basic, from desktop computers, you hooked onto a website and did research or did um, different kind of basic um, information. And WordPress as well has changed a lot since then. Um, there's what we call traditional CMS. Traditional CMS, come, it's a framework that comes in with a back end and a front end tools, functions, and ways of working in order to produce your back end and your front end. And what we're going to be seeing, so if you go in and you have a basic computer, you have your back end and your desktop computer, then we adapted for responsive design. Still, you can just manage with a traditional CMS that you hooked in with your back end and your front end, the tools and everything comes in built in with your database and your web server. But in our days, we got tons of devices that need to hook to your, to your device, to your back end in order to retrieve data or to send data. Whatever, it's a computer, it's uh, all those internet of things that can, can hook into your application and get data. So what we mean by a headless CMS is separate, uh, literally cutting your head, so making your front end um, separate from your back end, totally. So in the headless, you have your back end still with, within the WordPress, your database, your MySQL, that won't change. But your front end, you'll use new tools. You could use Vue.js. You could use React, Ember, all those new UIs, uh, JavaScript framework in order to produce your front end. And you have an API within a, a layer of API that will allow you to retrieve and get data from. And then we have a decouple of a hybrid one which is a mix between you stay within your uh, WordPress front end and back end uh, way of developing, but you can with the API, you can um, make some other function, other sites, ask data from your API and retrieve data and they'll be allowed to do it. But headless is uh, the way that to this morning we're gonna be showing. So really, the way to understand it is really the, your WordPress, your front end and your back end will be completely separate. So your back end will live on a uh, subfolder or on a subdomain uh, somewhere else than your front end. It's totally two separate things. The advantages of a, CM, of a headless CMS 
it helps you separate the content from your presentation. So, and the back end of WordPress is pretty secure. Um, it's well built in, it's been tested for a lot of time for a different kind of use, and it's really friendly user. So, if you give your back end to a newbie, uh, he'll be able to post in or add content, and it's pretty friendly user. But he doesn't need to know how the front end has been produced or retrieved data. He just wants to add content and everything will spit out. And it allows us web developers to use new ways of building your user experience and using new libraries and new ways of a new stack in order to produce your front end. Um, and again, it helps you um, be able to let your application send data or at least have access to data to all kinds of devices that will be able to retrieve data from your site. So since WordPress 4.5, I'm not exactly sure, but since around that version of WordPress, there's something called REST API, which allows the WordPress to output data. So if you hit the dual P, JSON, dual P, V2 endpoint, you'll retrieve data from your WordPress for since about two years or three years. So you, all the sites that you both put in on the world now, that you can hit that endpoint and you will, you'll be able to retrieve data. So if you wanna have posts, you go on slash posts and you will retrieve the 10 last posts and you get a lot of data from there. You can hit users, you can hit categories, there's a, a lot of uh, endpoints or URLs that you can hit in order to retrieve data. So if you wanna, I'll you be using a tool called Postman and it helps us just to make some API calls and see what kind of data we retrieve from there. So if you see that at localhost, that's the name of my server, my local server, I have a basic WordPress installation um, and with just a team, uh, unit team uh, data, the basic one. And then you hit the post URL and as soon as you hit it, it'll, it'll retrieve the data. It's gonna load the data. And then you'll, you'll get back all the data. That you'll get the ID, you'll get tons of data for all the posts that here, the 10 posts. So you get the author, the media, you'll get queries. You get a tons of stuff. Of stuff. So in order to build your UI, what you need to build for that kind of UI here, you need to hit the post endpoint in order to retrieve the post. But in order to retrieve the, the feature image, you need to hit another endpoint, which is media and with the ID of your feature image that you got from the post endpoint. Then you need to hit another endpoint in order to retrieve the user ID or user information and the ID of the user, you got it from the post endpoint. And category and the same thing, or if you want other kind of data. As you can see, that can be pretty much a lot of uh, hitting endpoints in order to build all your UI. So there's a couple of disadvantages of using REST API. The, one, the first one is called overfetching. And overfetching is make your client download way too much information for your UI, what they need. So if we look at the UI we wanted to build here, you have your title, you have the category, you have your author, you have the author image, the author name, and the, da the date that it was produced. So as we saw earlier in the, in the Postman here, you got ton of data that you don't need. If we even hit. This is all the data that you get from the 10 posts. Do you need all that data? Do you, and do you need your clients or users that are mobile that are, don't need to download all that data? So that's pretty a lot too much data to download. So that's overfetching.
And the other problem is under fetching. Is it's making your, your user download not enough data. So it needs to hit different endpoints in order to retrieve all the data that it needs to render your UI. And if you were talking about uh, maintainability and stability, um, scalability, it's really if you're Facebook or Coursera or Google and you have an API, you might have a thousand endpoints to maintain and that's totally insane to maintain. So let's say that you retrieve the image in, I don't know, 500 endpoints and then you want to make a different uh, call to your image, a different function, you need to re-go in back all those endpoints and m modify them. That's, that's totally um, unmaintainable on the big scale. So Facebook, since 2012, has started using or developing a tool called GraphQL. And in 2015, they made it open source. And what really GraphQL is, is just an API, um, a query language for your API. So it's really not a replacement for MySQL, nothing that, that range. It's really just to query just your API. So you'll hit one endpoint and you'll make your query and you'll retrieve the data that you ask for. Nothing more, nothing less. So for REST API, what you need, you would need to hit the post endpoint and then the user endpoints and then the category endpoints. But with GraphQL, you just make one query, you ask for the post, you ask for your author, you ask for the name of your author, you name for you go in and you name for the category name. And just with that query, it'll return exactly that data. And that saves a lot of data. So there's three types of operation actions that you can do with GraphQL. You can do query, which that's what we're gonna see this morning. And that's just to retrieve the data. You can do mutations, and mutations modify your data. And subscriptions, and that um, make your, your person available to subscribe to different actions. Mod mutations and subscriptions, we won't go into that details. Uh, and that could be pretty long. GraphQL really consists of two things. It's a GraphQL server and a GraphQL client. And the GraphQL client will sit in your front end and your GraphQL server will sit in the different part, depending on the kind of the tool that you'll be using in order to build your GraphQL server. And the GraphQL server is responsible for building your schema for your API and is uh, responsible for getting the data and returning the data. That's, this is where all the function that goes in to solve the data. So if we look at here, that's a basic um, schema from GraphQL site. So if you go in and then there's a type query, and in that query you ask for a hero, and a hero is a type character. Then your character, you can define your own character, and then you say that the name of your character is a string, and the friends is a, again, it's a type character. Then the home world, it's a type planet. You can define your own planet type character. And really, GraphQL is really type strict. So they, you cannot ask for, let's say, for your character, you cannot ask for a integer in, for the name. You really need a string. It won't, re it won't resolve the data and it won't, you won't get any data back. And for the GraphQL client, it's really responsible for making the, from your front end, it's just asking the data for it to your server, to your GraphQL server. It's just kind of a bridge between the two. So at the top here, on the client side, there, that's the query. It looks a lot like JSON, but it's not JSON, it's really GraphQL. So here you, had a, you ask for the hero, you ask for the name, the height, and the mass, and it'll return just, just that, not a bunch of data or useless data. So here you ask for hero, you get back Luke Skywalker, you got the, the name, the height, and the mass. Um, for building GraphQL server, um, uh, GraphQL setup, um, there's a couple of ways. 
Um, for the server, you can build everything custom. That's pretty tedious. Uh, good luck. Um, pretty long as well. There's a tool, the framework, that can help, can help you a lot. A little bit for advanced, uh, it's called graph.cool. I didn't use it yet, but it's pretty, really stateable and pretty awesome. Word Express, that's strictly built with WordPress. Um, it gives you a, a GraphQL server and a GraphQL client. But the easiest way to get yourself up and running, and we know that, you just need to install the plugin. Nothing else to do, and you get a GraphQL server. Uh, it's been built by a developer called Jason Ball, and he does a really good work, and it's um, really um, often uh, updated. Um, so that's what I'll be using, and that's what I have installed on my local machine, on my local WordPress install. It's a WP GraphQL, and what it does, you just need to install that, and you just need to go on your local, on your URL and just hit uh, GraphQL and you'll get your data. Um, for GraphQL client, there's two options. One is called Relay and it's built with, uh, from Facebook. It's a little bit more complicated and a little bit for advanced. Um, but the one that has came out really strongly and is really stable and really awesome to use, it's from a, a company called Apollo and it's Apollo client, and there's two, they have two tools that you can use, Apollo client or Apollo Boost. Apollo Boost is a no setup installation, pretty easy to use. It has what GraphQL and uh, Apollo client use, and one of the main features, it has built-in cache. So if you query one page and it'll send 10 posts, and your client or your user go into a different URL and come back to that page, it won't query your database, it won't query nothing because it knows it's in cache, it's just gonna deliver the data right away. And one little uh, last, uh, before we look at the demo or installation, um, is little uh, detail is they have what in GraphQL, everything is a graph, so you have nodes and edges. And nodes is your, like your post, your author, your, um, your media idea with the content where it exactly lives. And then the edges is the relationship between the two. Let's say you have a post that is a node, and then you have an author, it, again it's a node, and what's the relationship between the two. And that's useful to understand when, especially with you use the Ruby GraphQL plugin in order to do pagination. That's useful, useful to know. We won't see pagination today, but again, at the end of the, the slides, there's a, a link to uh, Jason Ball a presentation in, in uh, another WordCamp, and it's about two, hour, two hours and a half long, and it shows all the process, all the thinking and build with React. So um, I'll be having three setup here. First, I have a basic WordPress setup. I just installed a WordPress uh, GraphQL plugin. Um, you can extend it like you can extend um, a REST API, you can extend the GraphQL plugin. I won't go into the detail of that function, but mainly what it do, what's important is the type. You just specify the kind of type of the function that the data you want to retrieve, and then you have the custom fields, and it returns the custom fields. So within the resolve function, this is where you make all your retrieve the data on your server, and then just output it. Then I have a React setup. Um, so if nobody ever play with React, you need to install what we call Node.js, and then you um, in your command land uh, command line. Sorry, I install the Create React app. It's a no setup uh, installation to um, build a React app. It's really just that will install it globally, and then you install, you create your project, CD into your project, and then. That's the important part. You install packages, so libraries, in order to link everything up. And so I'll be using Apollo Boost, React Apollo, and GraphQL. Uh, the main part is Apollo Boost. That's the main one. The two others are just kind of um, 
bridge in order to bridge React and GraphQL client, and the GraphQL is just to make a query. It all makes sense soon. And React DOM is just so that in my demo, uh, I can link on different and make different routes uh, in the, uh, the application. And then you do yarn start, and you go to your local host 3000, that's the basic setup, which create React app, and you get yourself up and running. If we look, small demo. So here I got my basic website, WordPress backend website. And here, this is my basic uh, React app. So um, I, I'm here, I have a different component, but I'm on home. And if I hit post, I'll retrieve and get back the 10 first posts of that site. And like earlier, I showed you that for REST API, you can use uh, Postman in order to play around with REST API. But with GraphQL, there's another tool with just exactly the same thing. It's called Graphical. And Graphical really allows you to play around with your queries in order to retrieve the data that you want. And that's really a playground that's pretty awesome to use. Um, you can install, there's a Chrome extension, there's a app as well you can install. You can install it by yourself. Here is, I just installed the app. And what What's is awesome here on this side, you do your query. Here you'll, you'll get the answer back. And on this part, and that's really awesome, it's all the documentation of that schema of that query, of that um, GraphQL query schema, sorry. So on this part here, you can see that I can do query and mutations. If you go in your root query, You'll get all the different things you can ask for. You can ask categories, category, you can get comments, you can, can post, media. So this is pretty much everywhere, all the things you can ask for and retrieve data. So here, let's say that I want posts. So you can pass in arguments, but i just skip this out. So if I get, and uh, what's nice about graph, graphical is already knows what's in the schema. So it, it's like already asking you what do you really want. So I can say post. It's like a little bit like late JSON. You open your brackets, and so if I go in post, and then root connections, you got edges again. That's the 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 part that you need to. So you got edges, and then you got node inside. And if you make a mistake in here, let's say I type here, and it'll already the uh, normally the graphical will uh, tell you there's an error, and it won't be able to make the query for yourself. So you go in and nodes, and in here. This is the gravy. This is exactly what you can ask for inside the node. So yeah, I say I want the author. Yeah. Um, I can get the name, the ID. Um, again, the ID won't be, it's a globally unique ID. But if you want the post ID, you just need to hit the post ID. If you want the slug, ask for the slug. I'll ask for the title. Uh, ask for the post ID. And right away, you get the, uh, the author, the slug, the title, and the post ID. It went pretty fast, and you already got the 10 first posts. Let's say that you just want the first two posts. What you can do is put in arguments. Just say first. And say the five first. And what it will do, it's just going to retrieve the five first post. 
and it, again, it retrieve and send you back just the data that you ask, so it get really fast. So in order to get your um, Apollo client set up within your React app, there's a three steps to do. Um, two of them, you just make it once and you don't deal about it. Um, you need to import the Apollo client and you need to sign in and make a new Apollo client when you pass in your URL. Do you want uh, the, the where your GraphQL an, uh, lives? And then you just need to wrap your application within a Apollo provider. So really in the here, what are the two main lines is you, uh, at the top here, you got Apollo provider and you just wrap all your application within Apollo provider and you pass in the client here refers to the client, the variable client here. That's all that what it does. And so it'll know everything that's being, ac all actions that will be doing within your application, it will know. And what's awesome about Apollo Client is that if, if you're on posts, it'll make one query. But if you're on different pages and you have a lot of different queries, still, it's all going to package all the different queries it needs to do. And it will make just one query to your application, to your server. So it really loads super fast. Again, it has cache, so it'll import. Uh, it will import. <laughs> it will uh, just make just remember what are the data that has been downloaded, and and just make sure that it doesn't download stuff that it ha already done. So and then in your components, you need to import GQL and query component. That's just um, and that's the fun part. This is the GQL, the post. So here, what you got over here is exactly what you've been playing around in your GraphQL. So what you can do is just come in here, copy this part. If I can select it. No. You could just select that, copy that, paste it in your application, and you, there you go. You got yourself in here. You paste it around he, in here, and you'll get yourself your query already done. And then you just need you just need to go in and pass in the query component, and the query component takes the again the, as a parameter, it takes in. As a prop, it takes in your query here, and just and then what's nice it with the query component that's been provided by Apollo Client is that you have a if loading. So while your data is loading, you can make a loader, you can make it all kinds of different interaction, and then if if something is an error, you again you can make a different component, and then if everything's good, it'll render your um, different component that you made in the return. Over here, this is the return. That's the data that will be uh, outputted. Here, I made a little card, and I just pass in different props, key, um, just just React way of uh, knowing that if there is different uh, in the list item, it needs the, a specific key. Then ID, slug, title, and URL. That's the, all the different data I'm passing to my component, the card component. There you go. Um, this is pretty, uh, I know it's pretty new ground. It might um, be a little bit afraiding, uh, but don't be scared. It's not that hard, uh, but you got to play around a little bit. But as, as you see, it's not that complicated. I have two links over here, so if I open up. So here I have my app. This is where all my app lives. So I have my provider. I here I, I imported Apollo client and Apollo provider from Apollo Boost and React Apollo. And then over here I render my client, Apollo, and I wrap it, I wrap it uh, with Apollo provider. 
and I just here the route is just in order to make my my routes over here. So if I click on home, it knows that it needs to go into my home component. I can do whatever I want in that component. And then if I hit post, um, then that's the component I'll show you. And that's the component over here. And really what it does, it just import React, import the GraphQL, the GQL component, and the query component. And here I got my query. And it's just, again, I just copy it and paste it from uh, my playground, which is the graphical, and then wrap it within within my post, and I made a query component and inside the card component. If you want to see the card component, it's just a basic component. I uh, just output an image and an H1, and it will render. That's my card over here. And then I got an image, you got a title. But again, that's totally um, all the animation and everything can be done. Uh, different temp. This is from here, you got, you're got you on totally on new ground. So it's up to you to make all the different functions you need to do. So you're totally out of the scope of WordPress. But again, it renders a lot faster. And if you look, Here and here, it's instantly uh, instant, so it really doesn't load back. Let's see, let's hit. So here, it loading and then it outputs. Go back to home. Go back to post. No loading. Um, all right. So not too confused. <laughs> uh, any questions? Uh, go ahead. Um, the question is why did I choose GraphQL instead of uh, other different methods that has been around? Um, especially because GraphQL um, diminishes the disadvantages of REST API, of using a REST API. Because um, REST APIs, if you have a huge website, it has a lot of traffic. Imagine Facebook having a thousand endpoints to maintain and people would hit, uh, for one UI, you would need to hit, like I don't know, 10 endpoints. Imagine for all the users that are on Facebook that need to render your post, your page or your UI, that means a lot of queries, a lot of database usage and everything, even if you have caches and everything. It's a lot, using GraphQL diminishes the, the use of GraphQL. There's even uh, another tool that um, out there, it's been done by Netflix, it's called Falcor. It's similarly as GraphQL, so, but GraphQL kind of uh, made it uh, up from this underground really fast but it's uh, because it's pretty fast, faster than REST API. Yeah? Wait, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's uh, if, if I'm not sure I don't, if it adds legacy, legacy if it be, Latency between the, f if I separate the back end and the front end? No. And in fact, because it's rendered in JavaScript, it really renders faster than PHP. And within the theme, a normal theme, uh, if I don't know if anybody ever uh, um, opened um, a plugin called um, Simply Show Hooks, and on your front end, you'll see about 20 kind of hooks that your WordPress page needs to render before or go in and look if there's function hooked or attached to those hooks. So, and that slows down your processor, your painting of your, uh, of, of your browser. So it really, it's super fast, um, and especially because it's in JavaScript as well. So, and that's why a lot of, there's a lot of buzz around React or Vue.js. That's our, that's the main power of the, those tools. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yep. 
Ja, doe ik Bigraf, ja. So the question is if um, the WP GraphQL, GraphQL is able to query a relationship between custom post types and custom data that uh, are in relation. Normally, yeah, uh, everything is done. If it's not done, you can add in the, like the, I put it a snippet, um, so you can extend the, um, the GraphQL plugin. I think it's out of the box, it's supported, uh, but I'm not sure, I would have to see with your, the, the way that you're making your relationship between the two, um, but you know, normally it would be, it would work. Uh, the WP GraphQL made in um, about two, three weeks ago, they added the menu so you can um, and query all the menus. You, it used to be separate. They have LCF, ACF as well coming in, and so it, they're pretty intense on development as well. Um, so, yeah. Any more questions? All right. Thank you very much. <laughs>